Hello, grade tens. So often I get asked to explain the differences between discrete and continuous data. Today we are going to look at the terms in detail and give examples of both. Let's join KK to hear more. Each type of graph has a particular purpose. So when you've collected all the data that you need to represent, you have to decide which type of graph will represent that data best. But to do this, you need to know the difference between continuous and discrete data. So let's start by defining these types of data and then we'll go on to the graphs afterwards. Think about how many learners there are in your class. Are there 30, 37, or maybe there are 45? However many learners there are in your class, surely there aren't 45 and a half or 37,3 learners? <laughs> Here's another example. How many provinces are there in South Africa? I'm sure you know there are nine. But could there ever be nine and a bit provinces? Well, the government could make another province, I suppose. But that would be ten provinces, not nine and a bit. So variables like people, provinces, and even water bottles like this one have to be counted in whole numbers. This is what's called discrete data. Discrete data is information that's collected by counting. On the other hand, continuous data is information which is collected by measurement. Have a look at this speedometer. The needle goes up smoothly without stopping as it measures speed. There are no gaps in between. Speed doesn't jump from being, say, 100 km per hour to 180 km per hour. Speed continues to increase smoothly. A stopwatch will continue to measure time continuously until you press the stop button, so it can be used to time anything. From measuring how long it takes to bake something, to measuring how long it takes to run 100 meters. Gerard ran the 100 meter event in the school athletics. His recorded time was 11,3 seconds, even though the stopwatch actually showed 11, 347 seconds, the judges rounded it off. But the data was still continuous, just like the sand in this timer. It was a measurement of continuous time. So when we talk about things like time, distance and temperature, which need to be measured, we're talking about continuous data. Remember, continuous data is information that's collected by measurement. We usually round off continuous data because our equipment and our eyes are limited and we can't measure things like time, distance and temperature to more than a few decimal places. For example, think about measuring a distance or a length, like the length of this wooden spoon. If I measure the spoon, it's 41 centimeters long. There are no gaps on the measuring tape that I used, but yet I was able to say to you that the spoon was 40,8 centimeters long. But that's because I had to estimate the exact length, as this measuring tape has no marks smaller than millimeters. But if it did have more marks, and I had a magnifying glass, then I'd be able to say the spoon was 40,895 centimeters long. Now let's quickly recap what we've seen so far. We've seen that discrete data is collected by counting separate items. And continuous data is collected by measuring and is usually rounded off when the exact measurement can't be given. When work with graphs, there's an important mathematical convention we use. Continuous data or the continuous variable is shown on the x-axis, not the y-axis. Now I think we're ready to take a look at the graphs from the last lesson and see if we can identify the different kind of data used for each one. This bar graph and this pie graph represented the number of learners choosing different sports at school. So we can say the data is discrete as each sport is counted separately. Again, on this bar graph of the population in each province, the provinces are discrete and counted separately and you can't have half a province. In fact, all bar graphs and pie graphs represent discrete data. So if you see a bar graph or a pie graph, you can know for sure that the data on the graph is discrete. But what about the histogram, remember? The data collected had to do with different ages. Although we rounded off the ages to years, the time is still continuous. So we use the continuous data on the x-axis for this graph. 
This is an important difference between a bar graph and a histogram. The data on a histogram is continuous, and because it's continuous, we represent it using bars with no gaps between them. The class intervals represent the ages on a continuous timeline. The frequency polygon also represents the same data, so it also has continuous data along the x-axis. So whenever you see a histogram or a frequency polygon, you can be sure that the data it represents is continuous. Now let's move on to the line graph. Remember? That's the one that shows the conversion rate between rands and dollars. Is money continuous? Yes, money is a continuous variable, although usually we round it off to the nearest rands and cents. We can actually have an amount like 10 rands, 6754 cents. So a conversion graph uses continuous data. For example, all types of measurements can be converted to metric ones. Feet and inches can be converted to meters and centimeters. Pounds and ounces can be converted to kilograms and grams. I'm about 5 foot 7 inches. In metric measures, that's about 1,67 meters. And if you're going to bake from a recipe like this one for biscuits, you may come across measurements like 5 ounces of butter and 17 ounces of flour. A conversion graph will show you that 1 pound is about 500 grams and 1 ounce is about 31 grams. So, line graphs always have continuous variables on both axes. Now that we've established the difference between continuous and discrete data, we are now ready to draw graphs. That was a very clear explanation, but let's recap. Discrete data is data that can only be counted in whole numbers. Continuous data is data that is collected using measurement so it can have decimal places and fractions. If you like, please refer to the task for this section in the data handling task video. You can learn more about data handling on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.